Hello everyone, it's album review time. Um, this is during the uh, coronavirus epidemic of 2020, of spring 2020. And, um, and my hair is getting long and we're all gaining weight, staying at home. But I thought it would be a great time to talk to you about some records I love. Uh, today's topic is Keith Jarrett, The Cologne Concert. So, legendary live album, largely improvised. Um, maybe he had some of the stuff in mind, but I think it's just kind of stream of consciousness playing. But stream of consciousness, improvisation, composition, because these um, these these improvisations are actual actually composed as he plays them. But it, it's real music. It's not just. Um, not just messing around on the piano like I, I would do in the same situation. Um, there's a great depth to it. But, like all great music, um, there's a depth to it and then there's there's a there's a lightness to it at the same time. You can just listen to it, you can hear melodies you like, you can listen to it in the background while you're cooking something in the kitchen, or you can study it and delve deep into it and get a richness from it. So, there's a legendary story that goes behind this legendary record, and uh, it's a two-record set. And, um, it's solo piano, uh, like I said, improvised. Um, he was touring Europe, his, uh, his uh, record label was European, and so they were, they were recording shows as he went around. And, um, this one at this opera, he was playing at this opera house after the opera of the evening was over. So he just, you know, it was kind of a short uh, show. And it, the promoter was a, um, a college girl who obviously loved jazz, but, uh, didn't know a lot about promoting, not a lot of experience. And, uh, his writer or his, you know, the agreement that you had to make to get him to play said he would need a certain piano and that it would have to be in very good condition. Um pretty common you just uh, say oh I need this piano and it has to be usually it is whatever their favorite piano is um, it needs to be highly functioning and in tune before the sound check the sound check and then after the sound check it needs to be retuned so that when he sits in front of the audience he's playing a perfectly in tune piano uh, someone like Keith Jarrett who plays primarily acoustic piano um, was a powerful piano player and um, by the time he's done with the performance, the piano will be not perfect anymore uh, from all those hammers hitting all those strings. But in this case, um, there was a piano that happened to be in the theater, and someone thought, oh, this is good enough. And there's, there's you know, lots of stories kind of collected over the years about why, but he shows up, and the piano is just, it's in terrible condition. And he said, I can't play this piano. We're canceling the show. And the promoter, like I said, was a college girl. Uh, she was like, oh, please, please, you know, play this thing. I'm going to, you know, all these people are going to want their money back. I can't cancel the show now. I'm going to be in trouble. And so you just, just, please just do it. And so he reluctantly agreed to do it. And um, a tuner came and tried to do something more, maybe with the piano. And Keith Jarrett went to dinner. And there was some problem with his dinner, and he didn't get to eat. And he, so he comes back to the theater. He's hungry, he's tired, he's, he's not looking forward to the show, I think. And um, so he sits down at the piano uh, to a sold-out audience. You know, it was a good audience, and they're very appreciative. And he just begins playing, and so the first side is, is the first improvisation. And it's just a couple of chords and a melody, and it grows and grows and grows. But you can hear already, the piano has this kind of underwater sound that, that, that old pianos have when the strings get very tarnished and they don't quite vibrate correctly and they just, you know, kind of this vibrato that's just permanently um, what I would call underwater sound. But, um, so he's, he's playing it and he starts off very gently because you can tell he knows this piano is going to fall apart, right? It's as, as if someone um, gave you a 1993 Ford Escort and told you to drive to New York in it. He's going. He starts off just barely pressing the pedal, um, barely getting it going, being really cautious. And I think when and then in that same situation, 
the piano began to fail throughout the performance. Uh, apparently some notes stopped working and he had to play around them. You can hear, you know, clicking, clacking of, of hammers hitting at the wrong time or hitting backstops and all this kind of weird stuff happening. And uh, he played on and played on and he t it turned into the performance. And he's one of these, these people, and, some, and I know people who do this, um, he just, he um, vocalizes while he plays. Kind of like, you know, Bud Powell or, or uh, there's, there's tons of people who are known for doing it. My brother actually does it when he plays guitar. He just goes, ah, he just can't stop himself from doing it. Um, because, it's, you know, it's just as, the, as you're playing the music, it's just, it's just bubbling out of you or something. So he's, he's emoting while he's doing it. And you can hear the, the sounds he's making in response to what's happening. And this is an organic kind of thing happening. And meanwhile, he's composing brilliant and beautiful music um, he's he's um, he's just at a really good point I think in his career or something or his his ability to do what he's doing and even though the piano was falling apart at his fingers it turned out to be an amazing performance uh, like I said it was it's said to be improvised. I believe it. Maybe he had little melodies that he, he worked in that were just in his mind or something. I don't know. But I, I believe he... It's as if he composed... He was composing music. He just wasn't just messing around. The songs had... had a, a scope. Usually growing out of something. So starting quietly and then growing into something and going, going back. Um, and whether or not you even know that story of of the great pianist and the terrible piano just meeting it you know head to head uh it's still it just sounds beautiful and so um i know people who love this album who didn't know that story i've read a couple of people and so uh, i think uh and i think I, I do believe the story also is that afterwards he was he didn't want the recording released of the show um, he was just making do with what he could. He wasn't, you know, intending to this for this to be released. But the record company loved it. They knew it was something amazing happened in that room, and they put it out. And it wasn't even that popular. And I guess it just kind of went under the radar. But it was that kind of thing that just over the years grew and grew. And as people hear it, they just get converted to it and realize that there's something really special going on. So it's great music to listen to. Uh, you can take it in bites too. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Side one is one complete piece, and then the other three sides. Uh, probably, if you're listening on a on a CD, it probably just goes right through without really stopping. But if you listen to the other sides, uh, they they all the ebb and flow. Kind of going back to that underwater thing. They ebb and flow in great ways, and so you can pick it up in the middle, and it still uh, makes sense. So. Keith Jarrett, the Cologne concert. Check it out. Um, thanks for watching, and I'm probably going to make a few more of these. Like I think the goal, at least in the the original challenge, was ten, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I like to joke that I have about twenty top ten records because I hear something, um, I was thinking about, oh, that's a top ten record. Oh, that's a top ten record. There's probably about twenty of them that I believe are top ten. I don't know how that works out, but it does. So thanks for watching, and. Uh, Check it out and enjoy it. Have a good night.